Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to cover a few questions today off the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB. Now remember, the mathematical knowledge portion is not so much word problems as it is straight mathematical content. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So notice from number five to number six, we're switching between solving for an equation and solving for an inequality. So that just means that we don't have an equal side in between. But in reality, it's treated the exact same way. There's only one major rule that changes, and that's if you multiply or divide by a negative number, then you have to flip this sign in the other direction. So like the pointy side will end up this way. But I don't think we'll have to do that here because I'm not seeing any signs of us multiplying or dividing by a negative number. Let's go ahead and take look so it says right now 1 fourth x minus 25 is greater than or equal to 75 our first step is going to be to move this number away from the x currently it's being subtracted from the x so the opposite of subtraction is adding so i'm adding the 25 over to this side that's going to leave us with 1 fourth x is greater than or equal to 100 now, in this case, we're looking at 1 over 4. Now, remember, this is the same thing as essentially m dividing by 4. So if you have 1 over a number, that means you're essentially just dividing your other number you're multiplying by that number. So in this case, dividing by 4, what's the opposite? We're going to multiply both sides by 4. So if I'm multiplying both sides by 4, that cancels it out over here. 100 times 4 is going to give us x is greater than or equal to 400, multiplying that guy by 4. So this is our final answer here. So it looks like we are choosing option A. So let's talk about number 7. It says here x squared minus 5 is equal to 20. So how are we going to go about solving this? Well, just like before, the opposite of subtraction is adding, opposite, opposite of multiplying is dividing, and vice versa. But what about the opposite of x squared? Well, the opposite of squaring something is what we call square rooting something, which is just the opposite function. So let's talk a little bit more about that as we do this question. So first off, if we want to do the opposite, we got to get this term by itself first. So what I'm going to do is add 5 to both sides of the equation. That's going to give me x squared squared is equal to 25 by doing the 5 canceling over here 20 plus that 5 gives me 25 now for the square rooting so when you square root something you are trying to find out what number times itself would give you the 25 in this case it's a pretty easy find that answer is going to be 5 so the square root of 25 is just 5 now on this side that squared is going to cancel out with the square root so we actually do get our final answer here of 5 so when we look through here that means we're looking at answer a I always forgot the second part here. Notice how it says what is one possible value of x. The reason why it says one possible is because there's actually another answer to this one. Because although 5 times 5 is 25, negative 5 times negative 5 is also positive 25. So really this could be positive or negative 5, but only positive 5 is one of our answers over here, so we know that the answer is a. What is the area of a square that has a perimeter of 8 centimeters? Now, you may think that this is an easy question, um, but a lot of people may go wrong with it right off the bat. So if this is a perimeter of 8, it means that perimeter means we add up all the sides. It's a square, so every side length is the same. So I just labeled them all as next. So how many x's do we have right here? We have four x's. So when we do x plus x plus x plus x, also known as 4x, that's going to give us 8, because that's the definition of parameter. Now we need to find the area of this guy. Well, we can't do that unless we know what the x is. So let's solve for x by dividing both sides by 4. And that's going to give me x is equal to 2. Now that I have x is equal to 2, we know that each one of these are 2. And we know that area is length times width. So that's just going to be 2 times 2. So what is 2 times 2? You got it. 4. So that means that our final answer here, the area of this square, is 4, which is answer B. Number 9 on the ASVAB says, if x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 2, what is the value of the following expression, 3 times x times y minus 12 times y plus 5 times x? This is your basic plug and chug question. So you just need to take a 4 and put it in everywhere we see a x, and take a 2 and put it in everywhere we see a y. So let's go ahead and write that out. We have 3 times the 4 times the 2 minus... 12 
times the 2 plus 5 times the 4. Now, there is no calculator on the ASVAB, so let's go ahead and knock these out in our head. We got 4 times 2, which is going to give us 8, times another 3 is going to give us 24. Then we got 12 times 2, which is minus 24. And then we have 5 times 4, which is 20. So when we're looking at this, we got 24 minus 24, so those cancel out to 0. And then we have the 20 left over here. So that means it looks like our answer is just going to be D. So what makes number 10 so difficult is the fact that you have to do this without a calculator. And you'll see why in just a second. We have an equation here that says we have 0.65 plus 10 equals 15. And we have to solve for x. Now the first step of our equation is going to be to subtract this 10 from both sides. We've seen other questions like this, so that's not really much. I forgot my x right there, sorry. So we got 0.65x is now going to be equal to 5. Now, because we're multiplying these two, our next step is actually going to be dividing both sides by that 0.65 so that it cancels out here, and we're left with x is equal to 5 over that 0.65. So <clears throat> here's where our problem comes in. 5 divided by 0.65. Now, we know that because this number is less than 1, that the answer is going to be larger than 5. So I can't eliminate A and B. But it's not as easy as just saying, well, then, which one of these two is it? So let's go ahead and find out what this answer would be. Now, because we are doing... 0.65. I'm actually just going to turn that into 65 by moving the decimal over twice and then putting two zeros after the five to make up for that movement. And this will give us the same answer. So how many times does 65 go into 500? Well, let's go ahead and start off. It's either going to be six or seven, I know. So let's start with the bigger one and say that it goes into it seven times. If I do seven times five, that gives me 35, carry the three. And then seven times six, is going to be 42 plus that 3 would give me 45. Now this is still under the 500 so that works and that means we would go on from there with our division so 7 is the correct answer which means we're looking at 7.69 as the only possible option that has a 7 at the start. So the answer here is D. Hey guys that's all we're going to cover for today but remember you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ASVAB.